What happens when the doctor comes to town, but the sickness is the least of your concerns? Hello and welcome to Game Tales, our weekly feature where we recite the stories of D&D players and the many goings on in their adventures. Today's story comes from yours truly, and it is set in 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons, and it takes place in a homebrew setting. Without further ado, I am the Penitent with College of Lore, this is Game Tales. Take a moment to like this video and subscribe as I tell you the tale of the Plague Doctor. So this is a horror story about bad D&D, but not necessarily bad people. I respect and appreciate a lot of the people that are in this game, the people I spent time with, the DM, the rest of the players. They're all very good people, and nobody does anything truly heinous outside of the game in this story. Um, this was played with a group of high school friends that I've since lost touch with, but they are good people, and I do genuinely treasure my time with them. Unlike Lazarax New Hill, this one focuses more on the party as a whole, so I'll go into them briefly. I was playing a Feral Tiefling Ranger. The party also had a Wood Elf Druid, a Human Monk, and a Changeling Rogue. My character, to make a long story short, was supposed to be born human and cursed at birth, and felt that humanity was part of her birthright and that she was being denied that by being a Tiefling, and it was very... She's obsessed with not being a monster, she's obsessed with being a normal person. Um, and that's kind of where her whole backstory flavor, her personal quest, comes in. The DM was a very good friend of mine, but this was his first time seriously DMing. Uh, he was a decent player, but he had a habit of power gaming and... and kind of needing to be that person who does the most damage, and he had a habit of changing characters quite frequently instead of getting more invested in their backstory, their personal journey. Uh, I think this is a tale in a lot of ways of missed expectations on both his part as a DM and my part as a player, and I think it could have benefited from, as most games would, a session zero. But anyway, we start in this normal city. We're kind of invited there by this letter sent to all of our characters at random times. Um, it was a bit of a convoluted setup. I'm an outlander without a permanent address, um, and a few of the other players didn't really have a permanent address, so... How the courier got the letter to us in the first place was kind of a, a, a running joke, initially, that the DM seems slightly miffed at, but I, I understand that, and I understand where he's coming from. DMing is hard, and getting a party set up is one of the hardest things to do when you're DMing. Uh, so when we're in this town, we find several houses that are very clearly puzzles, like um, one house that couldn't the door would not open, it could not be picked, uh, none of the windows could open, and even trying to tunnel under. Uh, would be blocked by this, like, barrier. And a lot of the places here seemed like puzzles, and... We couldn't find the solution to these puzzles until we found out later they were in different cities. So this campaign kind of had a backtracking and going two different cities to unlock parts of the puzzle, and then going back to previous towns to complete it. And it was one of those things that, like, it's kind of a cool concept in theory, but I kind of wish we had been informed about it beforehand. Uh, anyway, while we're there, we wander for about an hour of out-of-game time uh, before a man in a Plague Doctor outfit approaches us. Uh, this is a NPC played by the GM of this game. He says nothing, but he motions for us to follow him. And the DM had pre-mapped, you know, what every house is, so we had just started knocking on every door randomly. Uh, but the the Plague Doctor kind of leads us to what is apparently the right house, because we enter and there's immediately signs of a struggle. And he lets us roll an investigation in the GM, but before we even get any like details on what we had found, the Plague Doctor finds a trap door, uh, slightly obscured by a rug, and just kind of pulls it open and leads us down to this basement. And I thought that's fine. Like, I, a uh, new DM, I can make some excuses. I can make, I can understand taking those cuts to progress the plot a little bit. And after spending an hour, I don't really blame him for doing that. Eventually, the Plague Doctor in this basement introduces himself, but that name has been lost to time, and I think it's probably better to just call him the Plague Doctor. He basically, unofficially, starts acting as the party leader, kind of telling us where to go, um, you know, he finds cult activity in this basement and kind of tells us, oh, well, we should go to this town from here. And I can understand using a DMPC as a guiding light. I wouldn't personally recommend it, but I do I do get it. Uh, once we're outside, though, once we leave this city and move on to the next place, 
we are fighting zombies. Uh, I ask if they're undead, as I'm a ranger, uh, and my favorite enemy is undead, so he says yes. And I start reading off my uh, favorite enemy ability, and he corrects himself and says that they are aberrations, which is when I start to get a little less accepting of that. I, I get wanting your monsters to be as scary as possible and do as much damage as they can, but at the same time, let your players use their abilities. Uh, during this combat, I do realize that the Plague Doctor is a homebrew class. Uh, I never got to see the specifics, but he was a mix of, like, Cleric and Blood Hunter. He somehow outpaced the rest of the party in damage, while also healing more efficiently than any of the rest of us. Uh, I believe he was also supposed to be level 5 while we were level 1. Uh, and his level scaled appropriately, as far as I recall. But for a few sessions, we were having a, a genuinely good time. He kind of got in the way of a lot of what we were trying to do with... Uh, the roleplay and especially the combat as he just easily outclassed us against the um, against these various NPC enemies to a point that after a while it kind of felt like why are we here it seems like he can handle this himself but we had a nice time you know we did some exploration we did a lot of roleplaying although he kind of took the lead there still we got to see some cool things I think he had some genuinely cool concepts and he worked in a lot of our backstories not necessarily to the degree that I might have had my hopes on, but as someone who had just started watching a professional D&D podcast, I think my expectations may have been too high heading into this. But if one of us said we clearly wanted something, he would find leads for our quest and sprinkle them throughout the towns that we would go to. We, a couple of times, myself and the rogue, tried to talk to the Plague Doctor and try to strike up a friendship, but he only really seemed interested in talking to the druid PC, who it now seems pertinent to point out, was played by the Dungeon Master's girlfriend. Um, but I get that. I get wanting more to talk to your girlfriend than wanting to talk to some people you're friends with, especially if you have a romance plot in your head. And after a few sessions, we make a camp in the woods, and our party sees a group of people walking through the forest while we're off to the side. They're wearing these ominous matching robes, and the Plague Doctor is quick to tell us not to follow them. And while the rest of the party listens, I, despite having less of a good sneak skill than the Rogue, decide I'm going to go after them anyway. Despite not being a Rogue, I am proficient in stealth, and I have very high dex from being a Feral Tiefling and being a Ranger, so I follow them pretty efficiently, uh, and I eventually sneak up, I kind of grab the guy at the back of this, this group of people and pull them into the bushes. And I, I check to see if anyone saw me, and the DM says nobody did. So I, I try to subdue the guy, choke him out. That doesn't work. So I try to just... I ask if I can non-lethally use the hilt of my sword to knock him unconscious. And the DM says, yeah, go ahead. So I hit him, and the DM immediately tells me, okay, you cave his skull in. And I, I, I argue for a second, you know, I thought we said non-lethal damage, and he told me, well... You must have hit him too hard, and I got a little obviously upset at that, but I I rolled with it still. As soon as I bash his head in, I look up and I am surrounded by this cult of people. And I kind of I freeze. I I had hoped that I would have gotten some sort of roll to see them notice me or anything else, but magic exists, primeval senses exist, something happened there, sure. Uh and while I did eventually manage to make the rolls necessary to escape from that situation, the DM looked very displeased that I actually managed to escape. Eventually, we move on from this little excursion of me accidentally murdering someone, and we come to a town with a werewolf plague, which I genuinely thought was really cool. We do some investigating, we do some attempts to cure these werewolves of medicine, but we can't really do much for them as they're suffering from, like, these horrible, like, disease symptoms. So we decide to go into the woods, see if we can find any wolf tracks, any any proof of these wolves, any, like, patient zero out in this woods. And we make a few rolls and we find absolutely nothing. Uh, no headway into finding out where these wolves come from, if there's any wolves. Uh, if there's any indication there might be some sort of patient zero. We don't get much, although I do believe the druid attempted to tame and succeeded at taming a wolf, which was which was apparently unrelated and nobody had a problem with. Uh, that was the only wolf we found, and it was totally normal, I guess? 
Anyway, after a long day of finding little of use aside from an apparently unrelated wolf, we decide to go back to the inn and the druid says that she's going to stay and sleep in the forest, while the plague doctor says he'll stay with her. I kind of suggest we all camp out, but the druid player almost has a breakdown at this suggestion and she's having none of it. Uh, she insists that while those two stay here, that the monk and I go back to the inn. The rogue at this time had actually quit the party for unrelated reasons. So, despite me being very suspicious of this and very not happy about all of this, the monk and I do go back to the inn and, surprise, surprise, there is an ambush sprung on us with no roll in the middle of our sleep. Come to find out that... Despite not getting a chance to save, we just automatically fail and end up tied to these exam tables when we wake up. Having the doctors that welcomed us here ready to inject us with a werewolf serum. I actually think it's a pretty cool plot that the doctors were behind it the whole time. Uh, I don't love how it was executed, but I genuinely do think it was neat. The monk player has mentally checked out at this point. Doesn't super try to escape and just kind of like, yep, this is happening. I try everything. Obviously, my whole character's plot story is I don't want to be a monster. I don't want to be seen as a horrible monster. So I'm trying everything to resist and everything to fight back uh, against this person trying to turn me into a werewolf. So I try to get out. I roll an acrobatics of 24, which is not enough. I kind of use a sleight of hand to get my hand free, which is a 27, but apparently that's also not enough. I ask what's binding us down to this table, and the DM tells me very clearly, rope. So I ask if I can touch it, and he says yes, and I say I would like to cast Rope Trick on it. To which he replies, actually, it's leather. And at that point, I kind of mentally realized this game wasn't going to work out. But I saw the session through to the end. Um, I tried casting Fog Cloud, I believe, uh, hoping to obscure the Doctor's vision, but the, the DM rolls Doctor doesn't have to roll. I even bodily throw my weight to the side to try to force the Doctor to try to find me in the fog, but the DM rolls no roll, you get injected. And the monk and I become mindless werewolves, uh, while the druid and plague doctor burst in right at that moment. Uh, there was no scene where this happened, unless something happened in DMs I wasn't aware of. But the druid and the plague doctor just kind of burst right in. Uh, they fight the doctors and us as these werewolves. And they manage to bring us out of this frenzied state, but not totally cure us with some sort of potion the plague doctor had. And he tells us, you know, it doesn't cure us, but it makes us not mindless or actively transformed, but we'll turn back at the full moon and all of that. So my whole character arc is based around being a monster, so obviously my character will kind of break into tears. This is basically her worst nightmare. Uh, as a player, I'm excited about the story arc, but as a character, she's terrified. The Plague Doctor, on the other hand, says, well, if you're going to overreact that much, and pulls out a cure to lycanthropy that I guess he just had? And as that plot thread is very swiftly resolved with little roleplay or drama, uh, that brings that session and what was the last session of that game to a close. I think largely we had different goals in mind as a group. I had just started watching um, Dice Camera Action, a D&D show, and this GM was a first time GM. I may have had lofty expectations for him, he may have had lofty expectations for himself. It was kind of a whole mess, but as I said at the beginning, there were no bad people here, just some bad gameplay. So, thank you for watching, and if you have any D&D stories of your own, horror or otherwise, tell us in the comments or email us, and we may read them on this feature in the future. Thank you for watching this video from College of Lore. Remember to like this video, subscribe to join the party, and have a fantastic adventure.